Okay, um, I just want to welcome everybody to Niagara Field Central School District. Uh, thanks for coming today. This is awesome. Um, the, 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 the turnout is just is, is phenomenal. Um, at this time, I'd like to um, ask Brian Printup uh, to, um, to to perform the, the native opening. Thank you very much. Um, for those of you who arrived a little bit later, if you go out either one of those doors um, in the back, you in, in the left of the, of the bathrooms, okay? Uh, again, there's water, coffee, bananas, bars, feel free to get up during if you'd like. We're gonna have questions at the end, okay? Before we get started though, I think it's really important that we go around, we introduce ourselves so everyone in the room knows who we are, who we're affiliated with, okay? My name is Dan Lalanich. I'm the superintendent here at Niagara Wheatfield School District. Welcome everyone. Thanks for making the trip today. I'm Jeremy Belfield. I'm the superintendent for Lafayette Central Schools, which has the Onondaga Nation School District as our school as part of our school district. I'm Dr. Stanley Harper, superintendent of Salmon River Central School District. And I can tell you this, it's an honor and pleasure for me to be in all of your presence today. And thank you for supporting us. Why don't we start right up here? Thank you. Last name is Simone Gandhi, Anadaga Sai, Principal of the Anadaga Nation School. I'm Jody Gates from the Lafayette Central School District Board of Trustees. I'm Chief Leo Henry, Trustful Nation Services. Bill Patterson, Senior, Westboro Nation, San Francisco. Sean Rayberry from Lafayette on the board Thanks, Mike.
I think we have one more in the back. Oh, no, I will at the end. So I, I, those are our introductions for the people that are here. Can we now go through and do some introductions for the people who are joining us uh, via Zoom? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, go on, uh, Ms. Robert, go on. Okay, thank you. Good morning, I'm Angie Rovier. I'm the Assistant Superintendent at Salmon River. Good morning, Assemblyman Angelo Morinello joining by Zoom. Anybody else still up there? Just uh, the snapshot. Okay, great. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Oh, can she hear us? Yeah. Natasha, are you there? I'm here. Sorry, the sound is a little off. No problem. We were just doing some introductions. If you want to introduce yourself. I'm Natasha Jock. I'm the school business executive at San Manero Central School. And it looks like we have somebody there from TV9. Local news station from Syracuse. Local news station from Syracuse. Thank you, Jim. Very good. Okay, we're going to switch over to our PowerPoint. The way we'll do this today is simply because we have people joining um, via Zoom. We're going to make sure we go through the entire presentation at the beginning, and then we'll allow some questions and have some time for questions or comments at the end. Okay. Um, I, I first just want to thank uh, Dr. Harper uh, and, and Jeremy Belfield for um, putting this together. We had a common problem, and um, it's a problem for our native schools on native lands in New York State. There's only three of us, okay, in, in the state who have this problem, and it's a significant one. So um, we, we asked you to join us to really um, push this issue in New York State. And we don't feel like this is the, the end of this ask. It's really the beginning, okay? And it's a, it's a sig significant ask, we know, um, but it's one that we expect the state uh, to, to help us with, okay? So if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, the purpose of the conference today is to create an awareness of inequitable funding for Indian Nation schools in New York State. Uh, the facilities at our native schools The facilities at our native schools are cared for um, in a way that's not acceptable. The funding that's available to all of our other schools that are not native in New York State is significantly more. And we're gonna talk about some of those numbers. You're gonna see some of those pictures and a little bit later today after this session, we're gonna go over to Tuscarora Elementary School and you're gonna be able to see some of that, okay? And some of those conditions. Um, Funding is approved in, uh, in New York State for all of our other schools through projects that we put forth. Funding for our native schools is part of the, the budget, okay? It's part of the actual legislative budget. And um, we're, our ask is for them to increase that budget line. There's about 14 buildings in New York State that share $3 million annually, okay? And you can see up there, besides the three nation schools, there's 11 other buildings that serve students um, for the deaf and blind. So 14 school buildings share about $3 million worth of funding. And we'll compare that a little bit later to what that means uh, for the rest of us. 
Okay, so school infrastructure. I'm gonna start out in a macro approach. Across the nations, schools are deteriorating. President Biden and Senator Schumer, they're trying to push this infrastructure bill big because it has schools, infrastructure pieces in this bill. So on a big macro, our president and our lead, our head senator is trying to make sure that this bill goes through. So schools will have the money to do the modernization and updates for safety for all buildings. Now let's go to a micro, New York State. As Dan just said, there's $3 million in this budget in the state to take care of all these buildings. And I can just tell you just quickly, really briefly, we're doing a current project for our main campus, $26 million just for one building. Did you hear that? 26 million to take care of one building. And as he said, $3 million to take care of 14 buildings. Can't be done. It's not, it's not right, it's not fair. So if you look up here, there's a huge funding gap between the nation's schools and other school districts and the school buildings in the state. That is the, that is the issue. It's not fair, it's wrong, and by God, it's not right. The nation's schools are in critical need of repairs from facades to the mechanical systems and everything in between. Uh, I think I skipped. No, 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 no you just went back, just the one on the right. One, on the one, on the right. right. one more. Okay, there you go. All of our buildings, these three buildings, each of us in each school district, they're in a bad, poor conditions. And when buildings are in bad condition, it affects our students' health and it affects the learning, especially the social and emotional piece about work, being in a building that's falling apart, deteriorating. What are the health problems that come with it? We don't know everything, but we need to get them fixed. New York State must support the native schools to make sure that we, have a, that we can create safe, and a positive learning environment for all of our students. And in New York State, the nation's schools must be part of a fair process that these schools get the same amount of financial treatment as any other school district in any other uh, building in that school district in the state. That is what has to happen. We have to be treated fairly. Our native students must receive the same treatment as their peers across the state. I appreciate everyone coming today to advocate on behalf of our kids, our native kids in particular. So one of the things that's really important to note is that in school districts that serve uh, all students, not just schools uh, on uh, native land, uh, there's a different process. Those school buildings that are not on native land are actually considered assets of the local school district. So this high school right here is considered an asset of the Niagara Wheatfield Central School District. Lafayette High School in Lafayette, New York is, is considered an asset of the Lafayette Central School District. The Onondaga Nation School, Tuscarora Elementary School, uh, St. Regis Mohawk School, those three schools are the only three schools on native land that are considered assets of the New York State Education Department. So there's a different funding source that we rely on through the New York State budget process to provide facility improvements to those schools. The Onondaga Nation School built in the early 1900s, that was the original project to construct the original building. Uh, they asked for over 20 years before they received a, a, a second building project to add on to the facility. So two, two major facility projects, one in the early 1900s and one in 1994 to address the facility needs. I've been in Lafayette for four years now. We've done three major capital projects, three capital outlay projects, and you know, it, it's very noticeable to our families that there's a discrepancy between schools that are serving all kids versus the schools that are designated for our uh, native students in the district. Uh, and typically the process for, non, uh, for schools that serve all kids in New York State is we put forward a building condition survey uh, and we present those facts to our voters. The voters vote on our capital projects and we receive a very high yield in state building aid funds. So in Lafayette, we receive between 90 to 95% state funding for those facility improvements. 
uh, very small amounts of uh, other shares of funding that are, are made available to pay for the rest of those projects. So we really rely on the state because it's a different process to allocate sufficient resources to fix up the Onondaga Nation School and the two other schools on Native land. So again, our Board of Education, one of the things that they're charged with and why they're here today to support these efforts is uh, you know, they are in charge of the care of our facilities that serve our students. We wanna make sure that we have safe facilities that are up to date, recent, and meet the programming needs of our students. You know, things have changed since the early 1900s and since 1994 in terms of student programming in our schools. And other schools are able to make those adjustments to meet the programming and safety needs of their students but our nation schools are not. And the state has left our native students behind in addressing these needs. And now is the time for us to use our collective voice to say we need the funding to address this need. So we have our building condition surveys that are done every five years, which informs our capital projects and our annual visual inspections. In the last 11 years, the Onondaga Nation Schools had two building condi condition surveys. Both building condition surveys recommend about 10 to $15 million worth of facility improvements. And you'll see the numbers later on, only about a million dollars worth of necessary improvements have been made. Basically building systems have to literally fail before the state will put money into the, these facilities, which if this happened in any of our other schools, parents would be charging their, uh, the board meetings, they would be coming to, uh, uh, their state elected officials. So now is our time to use our voice to go to those individuals and ask for help. So we'll provide you with the numbers. So here's our latest building condition survey, which really identified $10.2 million in critical needs outside of programming needs. Uh, the, the, the school has added students, the school has, has added programs, and we lack sufficient space. We have teachers, we have three to four teachers sharing a classroom space to address special education. Needs. We have language and culture uh, teachers sharing spaces. When, when we look at the purpose of our nation's school, which is to help preserve native languages and native culture, we need sufficient space to address those programming needs. So you can see there that they've identified $10.2 million in basic plumbing, electrical windows, which are of utmost importance right now with the pandemic. Uh, we have windows that won't open that we need to have replaced. Uh, access controls and securities, uh, making sure that ex exterior doors are safe and secure, that there's proper locks in place, making sure that we have adequate security camera coverage, um, and then basic site work and construction as well. So here's the work that's been completed in the past 10 years at the Onondaga Nation School. And literally these were systems that had to fail before the state would put the money forward. Uh, for example, uh, the EPDM roof over uh, the newer addition of the school. They asked for 10 years. For 10 years, the roof was leaking water, pouring into classrooms before the state would actually put the money forward to repair it. 10 years. If that happened in any of our other schools, with any of our other children, parents would be up in arms. Uh, an emergency boiler replacement. One day, the head custodian opened the doors to the boiler room, all of the piping, had fallen from the ceiling and was on the floor of the boiler room. The state had to come in and replace the damaged piping and boiler and damaged boilers. Uh, we did add in a few other repairs. So we had servers that were routinely failing because there wasn't adequate uh, uh, air conditioning or heating in that space. So we did have to upgrade that. And then the state was kind enough through an energy savings program to allow us to upgrade the uh, lights to LED. So we were able to save energy and get brighter, newer lights. So here's a picture of our beautiful school. And you'll see that this school is a beautiful facility. Uh, when it was designed originally uh, in the early 1900s, it, it was meant to last a lifetime. Uh, and it, it certainly has stood the test of time. But you can see for a building that's almost 100 years old, it has a beautiful slate roof, which needs to be replaced. Uh, and uh, you know the state has uh, unfortunately not put forward sufficient money to replace or address all the roofing needs at the school. You can see our, uh, one of our doors that faces uh, State Route 11A. Um, you know, it, it is not a secure uh, front door. Uh, it, it, uh, unfortunately, we have made many repairs to the doors, uh, but because of the age of the doors, uh, they need to be replaced. 
So in any other school with an uh, unsecured entry door, that door would be replaced immediately. We've made these concerns aware to the <coughs> brought them forward to the state education department. They've made their budget requests to New York state legislators. And unfortunately they haven't allocated sufficient funding. Here's an example of some of the plumbing uh, needs and repairs. This is a heating pipe uh, that needs to be re replaced as part of the heating system. We have this beautiful uh, cultural center, which is where our school gathers each, uh, each day at the beginning of the week to welcome our students. Uh, we just replaced the roof over this section, but that beautiful window uh, is, is leaking. So we're in the process of trying to replace that beautiful window and it's leaking down and all that beautiful woodwork above. Uh, here's our main entrance to the facility. And again, this is a door that probably if you pull hard enough would open on its own which with all the security concerns that we've um, addressed in our other schools, uh, we need to make sure that we have secure main entrances for facilities. Uh, the doors have uh, actually come completely off of the hinges. We've made multiple repairs and our uh, maintenance staff has said, we just need to replace these doors. So we put, put in that request to the state of New York. I am not able to advance the slide. Thank you. Uh, here's an example of a plumbing fixture. So, uh, you know, we in the southern hills of, of Syracuse, we deal with incredibly hard water and it's causing a number of uh, plumbing fixtures, the plumbing valves, the flush valves, the sinks. Uh, they've uh, uh, eroded over time and need to be repaired and replaced. Uh, here's an example of the bathroom sinks. There used to be a different, uh, I guess, for the lack of a better term, uh, sink display or vanity there. Uh, that completely fell apart, was repaired once by our maintenance uh, staff, but we need new bathroom sinks. And think about all the hand washing that our students need to be doing during the pandemic. Here's an example of an exterior door that's well beyond its useful life. It's starting to rust um, and needs to be replaced. And you can see those are just a few of the highlights from the Onondaga Nation School. We have a fire alarm panel that's out of date. You can't buy replacement parts for anymore. Uh, if if these systems were in any of our other schools where we had funding to replace, we didn't fix it, uh, we would have parents up in arms. Our, our families have been very gracious. Our community has been very gracious. They've been very patient. Uh, we've been very patient. Now it's time to use our voice to say we need the funds to address our, our, our needs uh, so that way we can properly serve our students. I'll turn things over to Dr. Harper so he can run through some of the needs at the St. Regis Mohawk School. Horrible story. Would you agree? You're going to get a little more of it. At Sam, St. Regis Mohawk School, we looked at, as superintendents, we decided, let's just go back only 10 years. What work was actually done in those 10 years? And I'll give you a little update of what we spent in our district and the other buildings compared to this. But as Lafayette, uh, as you can see, we have a lot of the same type of problems. This is the work that we have completed based upon emergency needs to take care of things. As you can see, our main entrance, we had to redo that for safety reasons. Uh, the state was able to help us there. Our cafeteria went down. We had to have freezers and coolers. Uh, and farther beyond 10 years, the St. Regis Mohawk School, the elementary school, the roof had been leaking. And I have my uh, building principal. We would have classrooms in a hallway, storage rooms, and we have had buckets while we're trying to teach as it rained. And as Jamie said, that would never happen in any other, other building. That happens. And it goes on now. Thank goodness we were able to get a new roof, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, we had to put in new floors. Uh, we had to rehab a wing that would the electric, uh, we had some water damage, so that had to be taken care of. Uh, we had to actually do a lot of improvements to improve the drain because we're beside a river. And that's at $396,000 there. And I'll just move forward here. In uh, the windows that we have, we have these very huge, large 10 foot, 12 foot windows. And it just puts in so much heat. 
uh, we had to have stuff, and so the state did step up and help us with that small project. Uh, as you can see, our classroom, uh, we had a change order, and there was a big project of $4 million that our enrollment was getting so big that they had to actually add some rooms, so the state finally added a few rooms for us that cost $4 million. Now, I'll get back to the roof issue right here. $2.9 million to put on a roof for 145,000 square feet. I thought it was a little bit high, but it was done. But only after a decade of classrooms of water point into the school did we get that help. Now take a look, you see $8 million that was spent over just to take care of emergency needs. But if you look closely, you see $7 million came from that classroom expansion and the roof. I mean, it's a, roughly a little over a million dollars was spent in 10 years to take care of problems. While at our main campus, over a decade, we've had almost $100 million in projects done. You get the math? We'll take care of this at the highest level, but our Native students, you're only going to get this. And I think that goes to Lafayette's same point. Everything can get done at the main campus, the main schools, but our native schools, where our children are, they do not get the same fair treatment. And in $8 million, roughly seven of that went to two pieces of emergency. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hold on. Sorry, my apologies, folks. Here's some of our exterior. Uh, you can see the bricks are falling apart. Uh, this isn't just a simple mortar job. The bricks are actually deteriorating. Maybe a little closer. Locked up. As you can see, some of our uh, facades, uh, the cement is falling off the stairs. Uh, these things have to be replaced. These are unsafe. Imagine if that fell down and killed a couple little babies. That's what we're fighting about. This type of stuff that should never, never be in a public school. And again, more of the same stuff. Our bricks are falling apart. They're deteriorating. These are some facade pieces that, you know, they don't look major, but they can create leaks, but it's falling apart. You can see our bricks, we're just showing this. I'm showing you a lot of the outside of the side. We didn't take a lot of pictures of the inside. We too have the same thing as Lafayette. We have doors that are rusting out on the bottom, uh, floors that are just coming apart, warped. And this is just more of that. Uh, but before I turn this over, I just want to make one last statement here. What you're seeing is not right. And like I said be before, it's not fair. And by God, it's wrong how our Native American Indian students are being treated in their school buildings as compared to their peers across the state. And I'm just gonna to add to something else here. All of the superintendents we all know, did each one of us and our main buildings, if we feel there's an issue, we can put together a construction plan. We can take it to a community vote, the referendum vote. It gets a vote, yes. Guess what the state does? The state funds it based upon our ratio. That building is now gonna be safe. It's gonna be a great learning environment for the kids, but our native schools, our nation schools, they don't get the same treatment. Damn it, Jim. What we realized when we began talking is how eerily similar our situations are. And as a matter of fact, when you look at some of our pictures in a minute, you're gonna ask yourself, is that at St. Regis Mohawk School or is that at Tuscarora School? When you look at the brickwork and, and, and that sort of thing, it's, it's almost identical how our, our schools for Native students are being treated in New York State. Um, our numbers are far worse. And I'll tell you, th this is really important to understand. They both said it. Things don't get fixed in our Native schools until it's too late, until things are falling apart and until water's pouring in. Okay? So... Quite honestly, the, their two districts were first in the real 
water damage. So they've had a little bit more recent funding and a little bit more, and we're next in line, but it's always too late. So if, if you look here, our building condition survey uh, 2015 for Tuscarora Indian School, they, they cited seven and a half million dollars of work. And again, and this was said before, this is work that is crucial, it's critical work. This isn't extra work. This isn't anything that's fluff. This is absolutely necessary work. So in 2015, six years ago, $7.5 million worth of work. Here's what they've done at Tuscarora Elementary in that time, $188,000 worth of work. And I wanna say this, the New York State Education Department oversees the facilities projects. However, they have that $3 million bucket to pull from for our three schools and the other 11 schools I mentioned, the buildings I mentioned, New York State. There's not enough money for them to pull from. You saw, the, the work, if I go back really quick, the, 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 the amount of money that was spent just on the roof was $2.9 million. That's the $3 million, right? Um, so it, it's, it's a real problem that the funding numbers aren't enough. So I showed you 188,000. Here's what needs to still be done. Brickwork. Um, the brickwork on our building, it, this isn't just a little cosmetic. This is water getting into our rooms, and you'll see that in a minute. Um, the, the, the pressure from the, the construction problems right now is, is pushing down on the windows. Those are the windows to our gymnasium. And in the bottom corner of some of those little glass block windows, they're starting to crack. Huge concern, right? We got an estimate for this work about three years ago, and it was about a million dollars to fix the brick brickwork in our, in our building. Now it's 1.5 million. If they would have fixed it a few years ago, they would have saved a half a million dollars. Here's again, some more of the brickwork. I know it's kind of hard to see, but you'll be able to see it in person in a little bit. Um, here you can see the, some of the molding that, that goes around the windows. The water gets in. This is the side that actually faces the, uh, our, our weather, the, the, the bad weather. Um, and it's very beat up. And you, you'll be able to see again in person some of the cracking in some of our windows. Uh, this is under the overhang of our building. Again, you can see it's the crap. This wouldn't happen and doesn't happen in other, other buildings. Those of you, you know, who are here in person today pulled in the parking lot and you saw the project that's going on here, right? It's a significant project. You're going to see, you'll see some numbers in a minute, but in our district, over the last six years, five years, we've scheduled, because we still have some of the work being done, $54 million worth of work. How much have they done in our native school? $188,000. $54 million for our other five buildings. Okay. Um, you, you can see here, and this is pretty significant, the water damage that's coming in because of the, 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 the brickwork and the windows, it's coming in and it's actually uh, ruining our, what classroom is this? This is our kindergarten classroom. Okay, this is what our kindergartners get to see uh, every day, coming right by their, their, their windows. And when we get bad rains, like here in Western New York, we just received, um, it only gets worse, right? Problem doesn't get better, it only gets worse. Some numbers for you here in a minute. Uh, this is the other side of that same windowsill. Look at this. The total spent on all other district schools and our schools over the last decade, for us it's really been the last six years, that was our number, spent $187 million. Almost $188 million. For our three native schools, it's under $10 million. And, and you know, when, when you break those numbers down further, it only gets worse, not better. Um, for our non-native schools, um, they, we've spent about $17 million per building for our non-native schools. And it's $3.3 million when you break that out and divide it by three. We know it hasn't been equal, right? But $3.3 million for our three other schools. $17 million per building for all of our other schools, buildings, 
3.3 for our native schools. Uh, the, the, rate, the ratio itself, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a five to one ratio when it comes to dollars. No matter how you cut it, it's far from equity. And um, we needed to change. And, and you know, you're probably saying, okay, what are you asking for? We have a lot of catch up to do. We've been behind. We're asking New York State to initially fund us each with $20 million so we can do some catch up work. Now, one thing that's really important, and, and I think it was stressed a little bit already, but really important for everybody to understand is this. The building condition surveys are only about the significant structural work. That doesn't speak to upgrades in servers and technology, right? Those things usually aren't even included. So some of those other projects that have to do with making sure our kids, schools, on our native schools are up to par when it comes to technology and technology access, that's not even included. So we need $20 million to start in the 2022-2023 budget cycle. And that's why we're doing this now. We wanna make sure that our legislators, the governor, kind of governor, that everybody's on the same page with understanding what our needs are now, because it's still very early in their budget process for next year, okay? And then after that initial investment, we're asking them to approve and fund all work that's scheduled. If it comes off of our building condition survey, or we can demonstrate to them that it's, it's a need and that it's something that makes it equitable with all of the other schools in our district, and quite frankly in the state, um, we need them to fund that, okay? Um, is, that, is that the last one? Yes, I think so, okay. Uh, we are very happy at this point to um, hear any questions that you might have, okay, for the, for the group, and, uh, and then and certainly take any comments. Yes. We, we actually have uh, one joining, one, one from an office joining us in the back from Senator Ward's office, a representative, and we have an assemblyman, uh, Assemblyman Morinello is joining us uh, via Zoom. And I couldn't see who else. We can actually take the PowerPoint down. I don't help me, any of your other legislators there. No, uh, I, I'm here from Assemblyman Jones's office, Dr. Harper, Molly Ryan. Thank you, Molly. Great, thanks, Molly. We also, I see we have Christina Coughlin um, from the New York State Education Department joining us. Thank you, Christina. I'm sorry, go ahead. It's a good point. We and we've all said the same thing that this is it's simple. It's about equity. It's real, it's really simple. And we're asking New York State to be equitable when it comes to funding for our native schools. What else? The other thing that we say that as far as historical, these are not monies that are given to us. The other day, then up on this, we said, we're giving to you. No, this is money that's an obligation of the federal government through treaties that were signed in, after the Revolutionary War, we were promised. More than this, but no, we're not being given anything. It's an obligation that has been passed down there were signatures on these papers. That's all we want is what was promised to us. That's a great point. I just want to echo um, the sentiment of this gentleman here. It's the United States government's judiciary responsibility to take care of our health and safety and education. 
then I'll get the health and safety directors to go forward. So going forward, this, this gentleman right here, they have a thrilling ideal. Let's go forward, let's lobby, let's go to legislative, let's go to our local well, senators, Jones, Schumer, um, Step, he's up next in New York State. So um, this is excellent. Thank you for presenting. Uh, let's go forward and let's get it done. Any other questions? I think I've. Oh, oh, we have one in the back. I'm sorry. Go, no, go, no, you. I'm sorry. You know what? Excellent points. And I want you to know this, that the three of us, this just didn't come out of the back of our head. This is something we carefully thought about. We analyzed exactly what was going on. We analyzed the attempts that we all have made, who we reached out to. So we thought this was the best process. Uh, we first started out in our communication letter. We debated this multiple times, the three of us. Then we brought in a big Zoom meeting where we asked different legislators, some tribal people to understand and hear what we were doing. This now was our third step to bring this together. And Dan wanted to bring it here because he had a lot of media friends and we said that, that would be great. So we came here. Our next step is this. We will require and demand another meeting with legislators. We will reach out to the governor again because the governor did say this. Inequity is never defensible. And you just heard inequity all along. So there's nobody in this state that can defend us being treated unfairly, our children. So our next step is we will put together meetings with legislators. We're going to continue this fight. We're going to push it. We're going to reach out to all the tribal nations, to the councils. We're going to give them exact information we gave today, and we're going to ask for that support to reach out to the governor and for their lobbyists to go to the, the legislator to continue this fight. Because as Dan said, and it is true, right now the legislative uh, department is going to be starting to work on the budget for next year. So our voice has to be strong and clear, and the support from the tribal nations has to be there, the same as us as school superintendents, and we need the support of our legislators. End of story. This is the only way it's going to get done. So we do have a plan. I want you to know that. And, and you know, give, given that one more thing I want to add, for those that don't understand how the New York State budget works, the, the governor puts out the initial budget for schools, and it's called the executive budget, right? And what we expect is that this to be reflected in the governor's budget. Our legislators shouldn't have to propose this on their own. This should come from the governor, it's who's just, talked very clearly about equity in New York State. We expect the governor to have this in the budget, which quite frankly, makes it a lot easier for our legislators to look at it, support it, say yes, and add that, that money to the budget line. And, and to me, that's where this really starts. This needs to come from the governor first. The bottom line is this, it's the responsibility of the state. My first statement I said, I said, let me talk about a macro approach, about 
across the United States. The president recognizes the importance of buildings and education being up to date for safety and education. He recognizes it. He's fighting for that in that infrastructure bill. Micro comes to us. I hope it's my greatest desire that the governor and the legislative team recognizes the importance of these native children need to be treated and given the same opportunities as any other student in the state to be educated in a safe and modernized building. And I think we stand on that platform. So logistically speaking, you know, the state budget process works uh, very early on. We typically see the governor out on television in January announcing his executive budget proposal and all the great bridges and airports and train stations that he wants to build. What we want to do is put these numbers in front of them now in July. I also want to invite you in August, on August 17th, to come at 10 o'clock to the Onondaga Nation School uh, and tour that facility and learn about the facility needs there. You know, I think we need to be doing this work in July, in August, in September, in October, in November, right. in January. And we're, we're not going to stop until uh, these needs are met because we're, we're at a critical point for the sake of our kids uh, to make sure that these facility needs and programming needs are addressed for kids at our nation's schools. So uh, I agree and I appreciate that sentiment. Today can't be a one-stop a one shop where we go and do a tour. We got to use our voices together to advocate for our kids. And, and, ju and just to be clear too, so everybody understands, the, the letter that went out, went out to the governor's office, went to all of our legislators. Um, so everybody received a letter about this issue well, well before this as, as well, before this conference today. What else? Yes. Uh, you, you people have started something that should have been done many years ago. I'm proud to see you doing it. Proud to see you doing it. But we have all those native nations in every state in the United States have been thrown under the bus. They have been thrown away. And I go back to the EPA, water. We need water at Tuscarora. Great you example. have a Tuscarora working on the EPA in Region 2. She says there's four nations that are on the list in the United States, the Navajos, the Alaskans and the Tuscarora Nation. A nation by itself needs water. And they can't find water. They're talking about $26 million to put water into the nation. And you look at it, they're not going to help you. The government is willing to help us, federal government, but who's going to take care of us? And I, the gentleman said, they promised health, education, and welfare when you send them, sign the 1794 treaty. And I hate to see it because my name that I carry was on that treaty and they still can't live up. Your people can't live up there. You people are trying to, but there's somebody all the way along the line that want to help the Indians. They don't want, they want us to go away. We're never going to go away. Well, they're messing with the wrong three people. What, 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 one, of the, one of the other things that I would say for those that don't know, you know, and Chief Henry, thank you. The, the water system that needs to be put in on the Tuscarora Nation, what that leads to at our school is that we have to have a separate water system, which is also in need of repair, which um, is on the list for our building condition survey. It's allegedly the second in the order of things that need to be done for our native schools after our brick work, right? That they're one and two right now on their list. But again, remember, right now, only $3 million. So absolutely. And, and you can see how literally that the water issue for the nation ties in with the water issue for the school. Right. So great point. I think that's where the infrastructure clause comes in and says, all right, it's time we sat down with the native people, let's say New York State, and help those people get back up to where we're. Our first school was built back in the early 50s. Well, I, and, and, I, and I know 1950s. speaking, yeah. And it, it's fallen apart, it took 50 years, I say, 60 years to fall apart. And I look at everything that's going on around us. And I, I talk to legislators from Niagara Falls and all that, Niagara County. Everything that they put in, they just put temporarily. And it's going to come down on the whole United States soon. And I just watched the news last night. 
this climate change. We better get those pleased to fix and you see what happened the other night when it rained. Yep. I had water that much and I never get water that much in front of my house. But that's what's going to destroy the whole United States if they don't start looking at what Mother Nature does to our people. And you people have a way of correcting it, but the state don't want to follow that. So that's all I got to say. That's you have to hit, hit Schumer and the woman that is senator with him and see if you can't get them to back something in the federal government. We did that once at Tuscarora. We got medical supplies for our new clinic. They didn't want to give it to us, but I knew the man that got it in there. And it's right, third paragraph of the bottom of the bill that was okayed by the Congress because they needed that bill passed. You yeah. have to play every avenue you can. Yeah. And as you can see, right, the, the, the equity issues aren't just about our schools, right? So um, they have to almost build, really, they'd almost have to build a new school to correct everything that's wrong right now. Understood. And I, I understood. We, we've, we've talked about that, right? We've all talked yeah, about yeah. that. In, in, right, in, actually, in, in one sense, building new schools would be cheaper in the long run. They really would be because. We have the St. Regis Mall School in the past year. Their building's 100 years old. Now, listen, I will say, folks back in those days that built, they built the last compared to today. But 100 years old, they need constant help. And it costs money. And you know what? It's just going to be feeding, like he said, that we could have done it cheaper before. Or maybe the new school approach is the proper way. You know, as Ben Franklin said, the most expensive may be the cheapest in the long run. And this may be the way to go is actually put new schools up. What else? Yes. Do we know uh, this upcoming infrastructure bill that there's a need there for schools? Yeah, the, the, there, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's about schools. There, it's about a portion the, in yes. there. And right now, at, I don't want to get into politics, but, you know, one side is trying to knock it down, which will put out parts of money for the schools. And that's why Schumer and Biden are fighting very strongly to keep that in there so that across the nation, there's money for schools. And that will come to our state as well. Okay? That's the problem. I'll say something. I shouldn't even bring this up. But that's the problem with your government. You have two parties. Oh, no. We were talking about the, fe we were talking about the, oh, the federal government. You mean? Yeah. That's sure. Right. Sure. And, sure. And yeah. Here's the only way of life to form that government. But our way, you don't have two parties. You have to come to consensus. You don't hold one to reach by and support one. Sure. You have you represent the people who put you in office. Well, one of one of the things I do I do want to mention because we, we've had this conversation and we want you to know this. Um, in, in our reaching out to our lo lo local representatives, there's certainly been there, there's an understanding. And a support for this. Now we need the money to follow. Right. Okay. So um, you know, in, in for Niagara Wheatfield, Assembly Morinello, Assembly Morinello, Senator Ort have been very supportive of this. We we I talked to them prior to this meeting, prior to the letter going out, and and they've been supportive. Now it's making sure that the governor and the rest of the state support this and vote to approve the, the additional spending, yeah. the additional. Well, we've well, like you said, we've done enough talking to people. And, 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 you know, legislation is limited right now because it's not in their law right now. But that's what we're looking, looking to change right now through this process so that we do have those monies to follow to do the things necessary. What else? Anything else? We have about three minutes. Yeah, just a, like, the one I talked about, uh, a voting block. Most of the Tusk River councils are members of building trades. There is a Niagara County Building Trade Council who, who do lobby these people to get money to come to the county board. I'm sure there's an Onondaga Building Trade Council, Perkimer County, or whatever they're from. What if we reached out to them and request that they lobby for us? Because the building trade will get the work, the unions will get the work. It's a great point. For everybody's best. For well, yeah, well, that's part of infrastructure. You know, when these capital projects come about, the first re requirement is to look for your local 
uh, organizations, contractors within your areas. Those are, those are key things in any of those construction projects. So to your point, that will be a direct, if that happens, local people will be looked at and getting an opportunity to do that work. And, and, we're, gonna, and we're working through the New York State Council of School Superintendents to also work on right. some lobbying there. Our diversity the committee. Uh, like I said, this, this is not one and done. We're, we're moving forward. But any help that you can be in bringing some other groups into this to push certainly is appreciated. Absolutely. Time for probably two more questions or comments. To do, do it right. We need good workmanship, no matter what we do, and you're right. That whatever we get done through the, our ask of the 20 million to redo the buildings, it has to be done at the highest level. Because think about it, we might not have that opportunity for another 20 years to really get something major done once we get this done. So it has to be done right. One, one thing I don't want to miss out on, and I apologize that I haven't said it already, we, since we have a few more minutes left. Did any of our uh, legislators or, or spokespersons for our legislators want to comment? Uh, this would be a time. Anybody from the state? Okay. Oh, oh, Christine. Yeah. I don't know if you were trying to chime in or not. No, I was just going to say thank you for the presentation. I don't have any other comments. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Christina. Of course. A little bit more, Nella? Um, yeah, I just want to thank you. This has been very informative. It looks like it's probably one of the first times that there's been such a comprehensive plan put forth. Um, Dan, you had said it, your local legislators, and I will include myself and Senator Ord, are on board with this. But I think your plan to get this out early to the governor, get everyone on board, is one that probably can work in this instance. I will commit to you that I will do everything I can to support this, support the needs. Um, and it just seems that when it comes to the native schools, New York State seems to forget about the fact that we stole this land from them. We did not treat them fairly. The Power Project took most of, uh, quite a bit of their land. And I think it's time we all band together to try and rectify some of the inequities that have happened. And I think we start with the education. We cannot treat them as second class citizens. They are our brothers, they are our comrades, and we need to make sure that we protect them. Again, thank you for putting this together and thank you for allowing me to be part of this. Thank you. Thank you. That's think, what we need from our legislation team. I think I think with that, let's just, because I want to make sure that we stay on schedule here because there is lunch at the end of this, okay? Um, but uh, we're, we're going to we'll wrap up our session. I'll ask if um, Brian Quintip could close for us.
Thank you. So uh, from here, what we're going to do is um, we're going to drive over to Tuscarora Elementary School. Uh, we'll take a little tour there. And then um, afterwards, we're uh, people invited back over right across the street to the nation building for some, some lunch. Um, part, part of the agreement to do this was that if um, our friends were coming in that we'd make sure that there were some buffalo chicken wings. So uh, those, those, that was the only way I'm, I'm, I'm making good on that promise. Okay. So um, it, for those of you that don't know, it's really going to be, you can follow somebody over certainly when we get out in the parking lot here, but it's a, it's once you go through the bus garage again, it's a left and then it's going to be a quick right. And you're just going to go straight down that winding road and the building will be on your left-hand side. Okay. But you can certainly follow somebody over. Th thanks everyone. If you can't make it over there, understood. And if, uh, a couple things we are going to have this was taped okay so th there's going to be a video recording of this that'll be available on our uh di on our district website we'll share it with uh the other two districts as well okay thank you thanks everyone.